All right, so the saw is ported. We're all ported and polished. So now, what are you doing here, John? We are gonna go a little step further on this one. It's kind of a custom saw. So uh, we're gonna split the crankcase, check everything out, and then powder coat it. 200 T's, you do not need a crankcase splitting tool, which is really nice. They pretty much always come apart relatively easily. And if you're ever tapping on one of these, use the use a tool, but it just needs a little bit of a little wrap and it should come apart. There we go. Like I said, with that's the cool thing that you invented. That's the yes, I didn't invent it. Basically, I just copied it. So the flywheel puller tool is basically a thread on punch. Okay. And that is the proper tool, just so not you know people aren't thinking that I'm uh, using okay. some crude method to split it that's the actual tool from steel just to thread on case. punch so that's what the inside of the crankcase yep. looks like and then this is the part i was telling you about jacob the you always see this little i call it a stuffer and it's basically a blocker that takes off some of your bar oil tank and i've never seen the need for it and uh, if you buy a new crankcase that does not come in it so i've always just taken them out <laughs> i've never seen why it really needs to be in there um and if you look, you know, where it is like this, it's blocking off the bottom section, you know, so your, your line is going to come in and only go down so far. I'm thinking maybe that's the reasoning, but I think it's just beneficial to take it out. Okay. Why not be able to carry more oil if you can? And you want to make sure you have your keyway removed when you do this. So we already got that out. And there we go. That's as easy as it gets when you, when it comes to splitting crankcases. Yeah. And these are the bearings. They do not have an inner... Uh, collar or race on them and that's why the case comes apart so easily and a normal bearing would have the the same steel collar that's on the outside there'd be one on the inside and uh, that's what really gets tough to split some of these cases basically checking both sides 0 0.47 0 0.468 0 0.4, yeah we're basically right there if you you can you can feel it as well if you have uh, wear Usually it's going to be a bad bearing to start with, but you'll feel a divot. Otherwise, you'll be off quite a ways between the two and that little build up there. That's just uh, that's pretty normal. This is actually in really good shape as far as bearings and, and crankshaft go. There are a few parts on this. This might be beneficial for so many people that aren't going to powder coat. When you do powder coat, everything has to come out. Uh, the, the vent for the bar oil tank. I even take the, the stud out for the, you know, the bar bearings, seals obviously got to come out. Uh, we're going to bake this thing at like 400 degrees and you can't have any of that stuff in there. It's going to melt. The powder coat stays really well. It's more of a, a professional durable uh, finish. Spray paint, uh, you know, I've tried it all. If you guys have followed my Instagram, it, the spray paint looks great for about a day and it comes off. Chainsaws live a tough life. There's nothing you can do about it. You can be the best in the world at spray painting. It's only going to last so long. It's okay. just the way it is. All right, so we are going to pull. It just doesn't matter where you start, I guess, but it's all got to come out. Anything that can possibly melt. The bearings and seals, obviously, are going to come out. The, the vent, believe it or not, that that can't go in the oven. Yeah, you'd think that, you know, being all metal, it'd be okay, but you do want to take that out as well. And that comes out with a punch. That's the only way it comes out. So, yeah, the punch, it does go out. From the inside out, that's how the vent goes out. Just like that. Gotta be aggressive with it. Otherwise, a lot of this stuff won't come out. The seals, you are gonna destroy taking the seals out. There's no other way around it. And they are gonna go bye bye And these seals are, if anybody knows the 200T, these seals are a problem, uh, always have been. And sometimes when you take them off, you'll see a lot of grit in these bearings. These bearings are gonna get replaced, but uh, they're not the best. They're not the worst. We will replace them. If you're into it this far, you're crazy not to replace the bearings and seals. I mean, yeah, usually that's what happens is they snap apart. But they're a one-time use, obviously. You're not you are not reusing bearings. I might not sound like an expert on this, but I have never been able to get one of these out without wrecking it. I have no idea how they come out, to be honest. So what I do is I just get I bust the material out around it. Then I, can, then I can get a hold of it. Isn't that it? I don't the even heck? get what it's for though. It's just like this. I asked my steel plastic. Yeah, I asked my steel rep about it. He's like, "What? What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Yeah, there's a little freaking like plug a inside." Secret there. room in there. Yeah, right? it's your oil stash spot. The one thing you do got to be—you don't want ever want to pry on any of this. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like none of this. That's where your 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 case seals up. So you do got to be careful with it. Just gonna grind it off. Let's start oil on fire. There you go. See, that's easy, super easy. No problem. <laughs> Just a special tool. Really uh, professional way of taking it out. And then the, for some reason, like they always are, you, you, you can't even get a new one, which I have never seen one. I don't even know what they would look like, but they're always basically uh, super hard. hard. But yeah, that's what's in there. A lot of people don't even know that thing's in there. What the heck? Dump this oil out. I have no idea what it's for or why you would put it in there or why you'd ever want to put it back. Yeah, but... Because when they send you a new crankcase, it's not in there. And they, they come with the bar stud, the, the vent. They come with everything, but they don't come with that. It's almost like it's designed to limit the your, your quantity bar of bar oil. Yeah, like to keep the weight down, I wonder. I don't know. Maybe some emissions reason or something. Yeah, like, who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's what it makes sense. And it's always a pain. Yeah, look at all that room in there now. Right? That's why I've, I've never had somebody say, yeah, put it back in there. Weird. Yep. It's a secret room. Secret room. The whole moral of the story is you cannot powder coat it with that in there. Huh. It, it, it melts and starts on fire. Now we are down to the bearings, and the bearings do pound out as well with a 14 millimeter, I believe, is what I use. Oh, Jesus. Oil. The freaking oil in my hands, it slipped. So that was one. That's why you always want to use wood, so there's these two little. Basically, they uh, insert, they're like, I don't know what you call them, spacers, guides. They go into these two holes here to center up your crankcase. So you want to do it on wood. If you pound it on metal on those, you can fold them over. Uh, and uh, But you need the somewhat of a hard surface, though, is what I'm trying to say. Because without a hard surface, like if you put this on a piece of rubber or something, you'd be banging away at it forever. Hardest, hardest surface, the better, but not anything harder than the aluminum. This is my theory. This is my saw now. That's yeah, basically <laughs> it. We just gotta pull the bar stud. This is just a, a stud puller. So it's designed to work without wrecking the threads. It just grabs onto it. Huh. And the reason for that is powder coat, it, it has a, a pretty good thickness to it. So you don't wanna powder coat stuff without, uh, you know, if you got powder coat on it basically, you're gonna have to clean it off and it the powder coat is so strong it's hard to get off even with like a wire wheel it's, it's hard to get off then we are good to, basically we're gonna clean this up a little bit put bolts back in i have uh, old bolts that i put back in and that way you don't get powder coat down in the the threads and then you just keep reusing them if you do a lot this kind of like the same stuff that we used for cleaning the parts this brand gunk or whatever this stuff is is really good stuff and uh when you powder coat you want to try to get all of the oil that even gets inside the metal that you got to get that all out otherwise you'll see it when you when you powder coat it'll like show up through the, the paint basically from the powder coating okay man we're, <laughs> this is coming to the end of the second day this is a lot of work man so the crankcase is clean and what are we doing? Are we getting ready to start cooking? Yeah, we're having some spaghetti, my man. No, we're going to we're gonna dye some plastics. And this is something that uh, I used to get done. You know, basically I outsourced it. Now I do it myself. I only do one color because it's the only color you can't screw up, black. So uh, we're going to do black and orange for Jacob, though, just because uh, he's a good guy. Uh, so this method is basically the recipe for the dye bath. Um, maybe you could put this in the description, I guess, but it's it's one cup of acetone, which is basically fingernail polish remover. The purest acetone, I guess, you can get the better. And I use RIT dye. I use one synthetic graphite and then one all-purpose black. And they go in the pot, that's for the black. If you're gonna dye plastics black, you can dye orange plastics, uh, like the covers on a 661, 461, or you can dye the white plastics black. Any other color, it gets tricky with the orange plastics, but the white plastics, you can basically get uh, whatever color you want. And you're gonna also put in the dye bath about two tablespoons of Dawn dish soap and one cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of salt. So we'll have to write that in the description so you guys can remember that, but 
You're gonna preheat these in hot water, as hot as you can get this water with, with soap. So it's basically hot soapy water. And once they're clean, they have to be brand new plastics. It's gonna give you the best result. And then you want this dye bath boiling hot, as hot as you can get it. And you drop them right in there. You don't wanna to drop too many parts in at a time. Like on a 200, there's the fuel tank. Uh, we will do that separately, but all these little parts can go in there. And then we're gonna do the bumper spikes, the little clamps, anything that will look good. Dyed black, we're gonna do it. A couple last little parts. And that's why it does not matter if the soap gets in the dye bath because there, there is soap in here already. So that is gonna sit for about 15 minutes. Uh, if, if you have the, the parts preheated basically in hot water, the dye takes really fast. I've learned that. I used to do it just out of cold soapy water. It took a lot longer. Uh, this you'll see, it'll be probably be edited, but it'll only be about five or 10 minutes. And then I'll shock it in cold water after it comes out of the dye bath, goes into the cold water, and that kind of like, it, it shocks it into the plastics, it seals it in. And then I go back to the hot water, back to the dye bath, I do that three times, and then it will be a really deep, dark black, and it'll look, it'll look amazing when it's done. So there's another yeah. piece. This is just a heat shield for the fuel tank. So Are you shocking it in cold water. Shocking it in cold water, yes. Without this, so you could keep the parts in this dye bath for a half hour, an hour, it don't really matter. They only take so much dye, then they gotta come out and they get they get the cold water treatment. And then when you put it back in, then it will take more dye. Don't ask me why. Uh, I've done so many of these plastics though, that it's just, uh, it's just, I've learned that's the way that works the best because I've left them in overnight even, not in boiling water, but in, you know, just let it cool down. I've left it in the boiling dye bath for, you know, 45 minutes. And Moving it in and out of the cold water is actually that, faster than Yeah, that's what, yeah, even five minutes in here and then into the cold water and then redoing it, you'll dye the parts way faster. They'll take way more color. And now you're doing the other parts while that's cycling. So you're going to just yep. cycle these Just cycle through. them through. Okay. And, uh. The hot water definitely helps, like this one. I'm not gonna just throw it in there right away. I wanna get it heated up a little bit, get the plastics heated up. And the acetone is very important. Uh, without the acetone, some of the plastics, uh, they dye unevenly. They they don't wanna take the dye very well, but uh, the acetone really is some sort of chemical reaction, apparently. Uh, not a scientist, I'm just a chainsaw guy. You're a mad scientist. Mad scientist. You are. So that one's gonna go in there. And then we will get this one. This is the fuel tank. Be careful on the fuel tanks. Do not, do not let these sit in the boiling water too long. That's why uh, this is this is how I found out the hot water method, the preheat is because of fuel tanks. You do not want to let this thing sit in there for like 45 minutes. Uh, I can it could possibly warp it. Um, I've only had one that the fuel tank leaked after, but it was a used saw. It, the plastics were already used. I think that's a lot of what and this is all new, this is all new these parts. are all new plastics and that's what they don't look the best when you dye used plastics it's just and you you took the stickers off too took the stickers off absolutely did this. Yeah. yeah otherwise if you dye it any color like you could dye these white plastics red uh, i have a bunch of saws on my page it's red green all these different cool colors uh it's it's not that difficult but my trick with that is you so we're going to do some orange plastics we'll maybe talk about it there uh, yeah, we'll talk mix, about it there. Mix yellow and red, but uh, basically the orange plastics, it's a, it's hard to get those to get any other color but black. Okay. So this All right, so we'll just ready. rinse, wash, and repeat. Yep, this one's probably actually already ready. ready. That's actually really fast. It is really fast, yep. But like I said, without the uh, without the acetone, wow, it takes a long time. It's delicious. <laughs> right? Mm. And this is only the first dip, so they're gonna look a lot better. Wow, look, better, it didn't do better. anything to the metal right there. Nope, it Crazy. does not dye the metal one bit. Whoa. So we're gonna put this in there while I'm gonna get something wow. else. You don't do this in your house, your wife will not be happy with you. Okay, so the fuel okay. tanks kind of like to float. So, uh, there we go. Actually sank really good. Never mind. The fuel tanks sink right down in there. So we're gonna take this out. So you kind of got to be on top of this when you get going on it. You're not going to go yeah, you're really cycling it through. Around. Yep. But I'm telling you, I have guys that have done this before too that I've talked to, without the without the acetone, it, it takes a lot longer. You got to let it sit in there for like literally like a half hour. And that's where I don't really like it. You know, plastics yeah. at like 400 some degrees is where you start to, to fail and to melt. And we're not anywhere near that. But why, why let it sit in there for a half hour or 45 minutes when you can do it in literally two minutes? 
All right, we're almost done. See, so you've done this with three this pounds. Is, yep, this is the third, the third dip, I call it. So we'll get it in the cold water. If there's any, any pieces laying around in there yet. See how much darker that is than when it first came out? Wow, yeah, it's really, really in there. Wow. And it, it, so you, you basically would have to like that. You basically have to cut it out. Yeah, it, it almost does look like it's factory like that. And and, that's permanent. Uh, permanent, 100% yeah. permanent. So I mean, when it's when it's all together, it's gonna look pretty good. This one's gonna go in one more time, but that one is even looking really good yet. All right, the black and plastics are done. Black plastics are done. Now we just gotta do the orange. All right, so now we're cooking a different color. Yes, and what we're gonna do with uh, the orange in this dye is is kind of a transparent orange. So I like to mix the yellow and the red. It just looks really good. I've done a few of these, but you gotta be careful when you're mixing colors. Uh, the best is to get a, a clearer container and do a test batch. You know, you don't have to have boiling water, obviously. You just mix a little bit of two colors together, get your get your color that you want. And then you know it's like three, part, three parts this, one part this, which is basically what this is. Orange is basically a lot of yellow and a little bit of red. So I'm going to put about two capfuls of this. You always want to start light when you're doing any color but besides black or like a really really dark color but if you Maybe dye something with a lot of blue you're gonna you're gonna turn it black as, as weird as that sounds Probably. and like look at that that's yellow but it looks like almost brown but that's just how this dye works you want your dye bath way lighter than the color that you're trying to get in the end because you want the dye to get into the plastics very well but if you already start getting too dark on your color you have to pull it out and then you're you're done. You can't dye it anymore. Or it's going to turn way too dark. And eventually, pretty much every color that you do will turn black. So this is going to be like a, not even a third of red because it's uh, orange is basically a lot of yellow, very little red. And uh, if I have to, I'll dilute it or add more yellow. We'll have to see uh, once this gets cooking. The black pot makes it look darker. But uh, I'll take some out of here in a clear container and I'll kind of check it out. I might have to add more water to this, to be honest. But uh, let's let it cook a little bit. I do like to let the dye sit in the water and acetone, you know, water, acetone, salt, and vinegar, Don dish soap. And uh, we'll let that cook a little bit, kind of like a little recipe. Cooking a pot roast here, but it's 200T. All right, so now we're doing orange. We're doing orange. So we had a little bit of a test batch, and the color is looking good. So, again, lighter than you want to end up. You can always go darker. So we'll put that one in there. That was in the water. And um, just so we got a smaller burner. It is nice to use a, the smallest container that you can, obviously, for, you know, doing these parts. We're only doing one small part, and then we're going to actually try the uh, pull cord, which I haven't done yet, but in we'll theory, see. The, the dye is actually made for cloth, so... Oh, cool. We'll see what happens. All right. All right, I think it's done cooking. Yeah, this is a first for me. I have not, <laughs> I have not done a, any starter rope, but <laughs> the orange apparently it works, and it looks really good. All the orange pieces are done. Yeah, that is something else. So uh, apparently you can do ropes, and I think this dye is actually for fabric, to be honest. That's pretty cool. It's really not that complicated. That not nearly as complicated as your porting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot That's... simpler. And it's, it's basically really the recipe, and you could dye all kinds of stuff. Yeah, really, I'll try to put the recipe in the description. You get, you get dye crazy, actually, after you do a yeah, couple of things. Yeah, I know. I want to uh, throw more stuff in. And we did all clear or or white plastics. It is a lot harder with uh, orange plastics. Yeah, that makes sense. Other saws. And then obviously you can't dye the really darker plastics, but that worked out pretty good. I'm happy yeah. with it. And uh, all right. I think we're done dyeing, actually. <laughs> yeah. And these little guys are going to be your best friend when you're doing starter rope. Just a little, oh, a little, a little yeah, crooked pick, I think they call it. Huh. And, uh, yeah, you can grab them things pretty easily. And then you just and do an overhand knot? Just an overhand knot. Yeah, you're the knot guy. What do you call this? That's overhand knot? Yeah, call it Yeah, because otherwise knot. anything Some else basically... call it a granny knot. Yeah, it gets too big, and, and it won't fit down in there. And then I do take a... A torch or lighter and then burn that end a little bit so you know, now the rope is kind of wet so I don't know if this will work really well. let's just see what it looks like i'm curious to see what it looks like when it's pulled out then you wind this i go about five times how long the piece of rope is that that's just uh these actually i think come pre-cut but i would say about two and a half three feet maybe okay and uh 
The elasto start ropes on the bigger saws, that's going to come pre-cut. It's going to be in a length the same thing. I go five times. Some people go more than that, but I think, yeah, you're putting stress on that spring. So I'm getting all the way to the end. There's a little tension on it. You, if you pull this out and you can't get to the end of the rope, that's wound too tight. That means your spring is completely compressed. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So you want to get to the end with a little bit of tension, but that looks pretty rad with my <laughs> vacuum cool. with my vacuum cleaner all torn apart in the background. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Pretty sweet. The 200 T's, everybody that's had them for an extended period of time knows that these covers melt all the time. And uh, it's kind of tough getting it in here. I do it in a couple layers, but... I've found out that if you put this heat shield tape in here, it don't got to look pretty, but I think I'll do one like that, and then I'll do one back here, and even yeah. run it up in here, and it, it keeps it from melting. Oh, really? Yeah. It, I mean, it works. That makes sense. It works. Like, if you see some of the, the new saws come with it, they come with little strips of this heat tape, and it uh, it's on the top covers and whatnot, and yeah, basically just, it's really simple, and it's very cheap. It saves you a $75 cover. So with the power recording, oil is the is your enemy. You want to get all of it off. So it's been soaking in the degreaser. Get a good whiff of that stuff, huh? It smells really good. Mmm, yeah. It's pretty strong too. <coughs> Dump this so we're not huffing this. No oh, man. Yeah, right. Oh, I take a little fun. <laughs> I get that in a to go cup. We'll just place out. Probably do that, and then uh, the powder coat will fill most of that in. I don't want to go much deeper, but that's a hell of a lot better than the sandpaper. Yeah. I'll sand it, but it does go in there a little bit deeper. I wouldn't want to get too crazy with it. 200s, man, they live a rough life. We're sanded up. Now I'm just going to have to, I just bolt the thing together like this. Plug, I got high temp uh, stoppers basically. So you can plug, you don't want to get any powder coat inside the area where the bearings go. And I just put an old cylinder on it, sacrifice it. And then yeah, so you don't have to tape this off. And uh, there's just a lot of taping and a lot of <laughs> tedious work. If you think the rest of the, what we were doing is tedious, you ain't seen nothing yet. Basically got to have everything sealed because this powder coating, it has a, has a thickness to it it's pretty thick not like just regular spray paint it'd be like a probably like four or five coats of paint so you don't want to get it where where you uh, don't want it where stuff won't fit because it does not come off these two that's an important one you're uh you're gonna do that because this is where your coil bolts up and grounds out so you you have to have connection there and if you get that full powder coat uh, you, you won't have spark bolts for the coil we don't want anything in there here's another one i kind of keep that uh free a powder coat the bar oil vent keep that free some of these i don't mind if a little bit of powder coat actually gets in there it keeps the bolts really tight kind of like uh instead of using thread locker kind of just a little extra extra to keep the bolts in there tight yeah what are you plugging these up with what are these, these are, they're for they're high temp silicone apparently and they're for powder coating i uh, it's i bought them specifically for uh baking in the oven because they go to 400 yeah. degrees for about 20 minutes and then this is just a uh, high temp like HVAC tape, and uh, it works good. But these are pretty easy to buy. Just for yeah, they're products. relatively cheap too. You just buy a set of a billion yeah. of them for whatever, 30 bucks. Well, all right, so we're set up the powder coat. Yeah. So we got your little tent right here, your little powder coating tent. Professional powder coating booth. What's with the... It's not a tent, it's a powder coating booth. Oh, sorry, your powder <laughs> coating booth. <laughs> What's with the electrodes and stuff? What, what... So what this is, if it was plugged in, they work a lot better actually. And uh, it's, uh, from what I know, my little knowledge of it yeah. is that the it charges the piece that you're powder coating. That's why you have to have this this lead going to it. And it basically, it's like positive, negative. So it's charging it. And then whatever's in here might be negative or negative and positive. I have no idea. Uh, but all I know is that if you don't have it charged, this powder won't stick. So it'll cling. You'll see it'll cling to this. So I'm pressing this pedal, which charges it. Yeah. It basically is gonna uh, cling. See how it cling to it? 
Yeah. I mean, it's on it's on everything else, <laughs> but and I put it on nice and thick. So and then it should be. I might have to spin it here quick. I got my rubber gloves, and Jacob uh, assures me I will not get shocked. Powerline clearance certified. Yep. So you're safe. <laughs> there we go. That stuff's on there. So and now we put it in the oven. This stuff would Just wipe off it, if you huh? if you sneezed on it. It would come off, but. Once you bake it, different story. And what I like about it is you can paint, do six coats and let them all dry. It takes all day, two days. This takes 20 minutes. And then once it's cooled, it's, it's done. And it's That's just it. a toaster oven, huh? It's a toaster oven. Powder coating oven. We just bought it. Yep. Powder Walmart. coating oven, Jacob. Powder, sorry. Powder coating oven. How long do you leave it in there? 20 minutes on 400. All right. It's like a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> You're cooking all sorts of stuff today. Yeah, right? We got that. You need to get a shop with a kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like, get hungry looking at all this stuff. We could be making pizza. Yeah, it looks tasty. Selling dogs. Ooh, that turned out good. Oh, that's perfect, dude. Okay, get most of the nasty stuff. Ah, good catch, huh? Should do it with a strainer. All stuff is cleaned? Yep, I just throw it in a big old container like that. Get a really, get a new thing, a carb cleaner. Throw a glove on. And uh, this stuff, we had it sitting there how long? I mean, we've been working on this off for like a month, so. <laughs> Three days. Three days. This, got, this one got pretty involved. If they all took this long, I would have been done with this business a long time ago. Check that out, huh? You never know that wasn't a new flywheel. You hit it with a little bit of compressed air. This thing will look brand new. There you go, huh? This is pretty good. Man, nice. Yeah. All right, so on when you use powder coat, and we used, uh, I put three layers of powder coat on this, you're going to be... Uh, you're gonna have some buildup and you're gonna to wanna to sand that off, especially with the tool that puts these bearings in. So on these three little points right here, you're gonna to wanna to sand that back down to through the original powder coat. So you know that you have that, that bearing and seal all the way seated in, well the seal especially. You know, hit that with the hand sander. Also, you're gonna to wanna to sand this. Let's get this bar stud out. Just get this down to and then I'll hit it with. How do you know which parts to sand off? It's gonna be just parts that make contact. Yeah. Right? So when you put uh, like this, I can hit that with a hand sander actually too. So like right here, when I use the tool, which is this, I actually have it right here. When you press the seals in, this is actually a seal tool, and you're gonna want to have it down to the original surface. Otherwise, you know you're not getting the seal down far enough because this is made to put the seal on basically is what i'm saying and right here too this is where it stops the tool which is basically a sleeve you just push it down so now if you had a 16th of an inch of buildup on there you're not going to get your seal all the way on if okay. that makes sense yeah and then the other parts like we plugged the areas that the bearings and seals go in with those high temp stoppers so uh, you definitely wouldn't would not want to get anything in there and if you did you'd have to clean it out you know we plugged everything we could so any little areas that are critical for, you know, for room, you, you're, you're gonna wanna take care of that. Lots of little parts need to go on that. The wiring and the plug lead can be a pain sometimes to get in. The way this works, you have to basically fish this through here first because you can't get this, this fatter end through it. And then usually if you don't bend this wire at all, you can just fish it right through there. And, uh, then put this part on so it stops it from poking back through. And this one goes in easy. So that's that one. And then you have to get the plug lead, which is over here. Just bend it really straight because this one has to go through. And again, you have to get it through this grommet as well first because you can't, oh, whoops, it goes through the other way. Never mind. Again, been a while. There we go. Fish it through, then through this grommet. And the only reason for that, I guess, is 
if you push it this way, you have to take the plug lead off. And if you don't put the grommet on first before you put this end in, you can't fit this through. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to put it, it's got to go kind of in a certain order. And then I wait to do this until I know how much length I need on these. And uh, I'll push, I'll, I'll center all that stuff. And then this tucks behind the oil pump. So I can leave it like that for now. And then I know that I don't have to mess with this because you don't want to get it all the way assembled and realize you didn't even put this in. That's kind okay. of a pain. But I think that's much easier than trying to work with two crankcase halves and wiring all in the way. Cool. So there it is. These style coils for the steels, stills. Jacob's got me saying still now. <laughs> they thread on. I don't know. That's what they call it where I live. Really? They Everybody says still? Everybody says still. Yeah. I think it's probably about half and half here. Mm -hmm. So the coil can, is going to go we, like... Can we tell them about Eric Trump? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I don't care. What do you, who's who's going to believe me anyway? You can check out John. Yeah, John built the software, Eric Trump. Uh, uh, Jacob didn't believe me at first, I don't think. I didn't believe him. I guess he saw... Uh, I guess I put it back in my motorhome. He saw my Screaming Eagle and yeah. message John. And you can... I didn't believe him at first either, but I looked and <laughs> Eric, Tr him. Eric Trump follows you on Instagram. I'm like, right? holy yeah, of crap, he does. no way. Well, who, why wouldn't Eric Trump follow me? <laughs> right, who doesn't Come follow on. John? It was, yeah, it was a 261, just like Jacob's, except uh, I didn't go with crazy with the hydro dipping and all that stuff. So mine's even better. Yeah, his is even better. So it's got the, <laughs> mine's the even more dipping. patriotic. Yeah, he's all about America, that guy. I tell you what, the most normal, down-to-earth person that you're going to deal with, I was blown away. I think I was more starstruck than anything. Like, it, uh, He couldn't have been more normal. Messaged me back and forth, treated me like a normal person. It was pretty crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. He doesn't follow me. He doesn't follow he, must, uh, <laughs> he saw the, the 261. I don't know, I don't know what over. happened there. But. Yeah, you missed out on that one. <laughs> this grommet right here, now you know how much length that you got. So you only need about that much on this wire. But now with that coil in there, you know that you can pull that that far, if that makes sense. Okay. And then you just got to fish this grommet in, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil in. This, these ones are a pain to get in absolutely a pain to get these in one of the hardest parts of this whole assembly believe it or not is to get that dumb little grommet in there i get yeah. it so you, you see how that kind of pulls it down like that yeah. it doesn't have a choice but to get the bottom part in yeah. and then you can't be gentle with it you'll never get it in i've even disassembled some of these where they just don't put it in or they'll like cut a bunch of it off just because they gave up i mean this could literally if you're gonna film me the whole time i'm gonna you just, Probably there for 10 a minutes. Bit, you just gotta get it in there somehow and uh no easy trick to do no this. easy trick a right. little bit of a little bit of lubrication i guess a little bit of grease on it there i'm starting to get it and like i said you don't want to stab through it to hit the wiring so it's, it's slowly going and i've never like i said i've never found a really like a trick to this but i don't like not putting it in there we go my special grommet installing tool I think that's what you call those, Grommet. Mm -hmm. There it is. And that's just gonna keep it from, the oil The oil pump goes on too, and then the spark plug lead just goes behind it. So that kind of keeps it in there. These things are just jammed in. I mean, every little thing they can get in there, they throw it in there and don't give it much room. So it's jammed. there we go. There. How's that for custom? Looks like candy yeah, corn or something. Just putting her back together. Now the big pieces go on. This is the fast part, putting it back together like this. This little guy right here, this line, I think you saw me do that. We opened up that hole a little bit. Yeah. This impulse line, because it goes through here and they always get kinked and uh, they kind of, they can kind of wear pretty fast through there. It was a sharp edge. You've seen how small that opening was before I opened it up. Yeah, I do because remember this, that. this impulse line has to go through here. And with that really sharp edge there, and it's not really round, it's almost like a D-shaped. So I've always opened them up a little bit. Now we did that earlier. That way it's got some room in there. And uh, I even put a little bit of heat shrink tape around it for like electrical. It just kind of gives it a little nice. extra padding. And this is basically just put it back together just how it came apart. No clamps on these. Some people put that gasket maker around there. We just got a new boot, so we don't need to. And this, when this goes on, this goes up and down. There's this little line right here. A lot of times when I get these things, I see them, I'll see them like this for some reason. 
just one of these goofy little assembly tricks. So you'll know if your 200 has been torn apart if you get in and that piece is in there the wrong way. It's just one of those things that is, a lot of people just don't think that there's a right and a wrong way. There is a right and a wrong way for that piece. How many 200s do you think you've taken apart and put back together? Like, oh, take boy. A guess. Like, just pick a number. Uh, Probably close to 200, yeah. maybe. It's, it's hard to say, I guess. I mean, if maybe more, I guess. I don't know. If you count. Yeah. Yeah, probably more than 200, but no more. We're done yeah. with them. So, so you say. So I say, right? <laughs> we got Let's all the uh, nice new hardware. Doing this one up right. And then this gun is, I've talked about that before, but it locks so I can squeeze them down. So if anybody thinks I'm just ramming bolts, I'm, I'm not. It's actually set very low, so it makes it impossible to strip bolts i'll see how i lot so i twist it like that yeah so i always get that comment when i work on stuff set it low torque it by hand there we go so we're getting there okay so yeah this bolt right here i put a little bit of red loctite on it just because you know the mufflers this one has it's a muffler that's been ran before so the bolt has come out, and there we go. So that makes it a dual port muffler. JCS. JCS. Gotta love it. Gotta thank Gordy at West Coast for that guy. He uh, made and some you, custom ones for me. So that, you came up with the idea, and then he kind of mass produced it. Yeah, yeah. And then he was, you know, he, he gave me a few that had JCS in it, but they're all gonna have WCS in it. It's definitely his product. It was just a kind of an idea I had because I was sick of trying to figure out a way to raise well to this aluminum this is an aluminum yeah. and i just had problems with them so i'm falling out and yeah i kind of cool. just gave him a general idea and he made it a real life product and it's actually it's pretty sweet yeah. I, I like it a lot of people use them big parts going on now buddy so let me grab this. these you have so there's two different styles of bolts for these covers if you have this bolt this fat one that is not for your recoil. That goes on the other side for the clasp. It's the thinner ones that go for your recoil. If you ram one of them, them thicker bolts in here, you're gonna start stripping out plastics and even you could possibly break the plastics. And then the two metal, the longer ones, or the fine thread, go into the crankcase. Like all these little, there's, Basically four main styles of bolts in these 200s, and if you know where they go, it's pretty simple. But if you put wrong ones in wrong spots, you could punch holes in your crankcase. Uh, for instance, your oil pump takes the shorter ones. If you put the longer ones in, you could you could punch through your crankcase and you have a really bad day. And uh, put the you put a short one in where the long one goes, you could not be held in all the way. Little this little piece right here that snaps in. So I'll make sure that's in there all the way. Then it kind of latches under this piece for the fuel tank and sits in there just like that. It's never gonna be that clean again. Right, that's the one thing about them. Yeah. It's like, man, these these saws just live a live an old life. Live a dirty life. Nothing you can do. And we're almost there, really. With the chain catch. The powder coated felling dog, quarter inch sprocket, that's gonna be sweet. The orange felling dog. Actually it does look pretty good orange. Matches. Yeah, that's cool. The prototype. Yeah, it's one of a kind. It is. There. So attach this first and then uh well i gotta get my here we'll redo that take two i put that uh, antibody mount in first okay, okay so now this is how you really do it basically put this guy in first tilt the handle up like that don't ever take that green wire out if you can avoid it if it comes out or it came 
with it out, then you don't really have a choice. That goes around here. It always goes to this back post. And then you can get that bolt in, and they just basically, it's just like that. And it doesn't matter if you if it tightens and it touches anything, because it's just grounded out. So it's fine that it sits down like that. It's actually better like that. And don't attach it to the front post, because then it's too kinked in there. And then in the handle on the bottom is the shorter of the, the bigger bolts. And it's the only one like that. Oh yeah, we are gonna try the, I'll send you with one of these and then you can be one of our test guinea pigs because not many people have actually tried these yet. It eliminates, it's called a buffer eliminator from Nick Stockel. And it stiffens up the suspension basically because these things yeah. tear all the time. I don't know if you've had a 200T that you've had yeah, one of these go bad. I have. Yeah, so the, basically this is, uh, it eliminates that. It and matches too. It matches. It's red. You are you are colorblind, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> you think that matches? I thought it matched. <laughs> no, not even close. <laughs> we won't tell them, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably get you, because it's red and that's orange, we'll probably get okay. you a, a black one. So it's it does okay. match. At least matches the other part. Yeah, what an idiot. <laughs> it's, it's just Stupid. colorblind. Apparently, huh? Stupid, Jacob. <laughs> or maybe it's my goofy eyes with my crazy color perception. Yeah, you just got extra good color vision. Yeah, right? I can kind of see it now. That can you? you? Pointed out, yeah, like, oh, there's a different color. There we go. So it takes that shorter one. But yeah, I mean, it's not horrible. Yeah, it is. No, I'm just kidding. And then, we'll come on around to this side. Oh, what a great time for a phone call. So this guy here, don't need to be gentle with it. The more, the more time, the more you are gentle with it, the harder it is to get these through. And then you, you have to actually have more of a chance of wrecking them. They're really tough, so just, just grab it and go. Don't use aggressive serration on your players. Like you don't want to use something that's really aggressive, but just goes through like that, pops through, and uh, the rest of it is just card housing. Take this off quick so we can stuff this through here. I think your old tank had a different style vent on it, but these work too. Sometimes you gotta shorten the lineup though. We'll get this attached and set into place. It clips in right here. Okay, this one will be okay, but sometimes this this is a little long and it likes to it likes to kink right there. That's your vent line. So your saw will run and everything will work good, but then it'll start to act up and die out. And I've noticed that sometimes you just gotta cut a little bit off that line. It's really weird that some of them are like that and others are fine. This is another part that sometimes people have a little bit of a hard time with is putting this carb in. I'll show a really easy way to do this. This hook end, it kind of looks like, a, I don't know what you'd call that shape, but this the smaller hook with a not S-curve that hooks in from the outside in. Just let it fall down. You have your saw in the start position like that. And you also need to have this boot on before you put the carb in, accelerator pump boot. So what I do is I come in through the side here, grab this piece. Don't worry about the, the choke lever at first. And as long as it's in the start position, this might be hard to see. You can kind of, you can guide this the throttle linkage in. I kind of guided it in where it needs to go as I set the carb in. And that's in all the way. Now, you put your choke on. Everything should sit in place. If it stayed in there. Did it stay? No, it didn't stay. So, start over. I'll show you how to do it twice, apparently, because we're really thorough. They're kind of a pain, but usually this works really good with no issue. Looks like it stayed. I think we're good this time. Okay, there we go. You want to test it before you put the cover on, because otherwise you're just taking it back off. And then don't forget to put your fuel line on. So I do all this before I put the bolts in for the suspension and the handle and all that, because it allows you to move stuff around a little bit. And like you, we can put that in too, and the climbing clasp and all that. It doesn't matter. That can go in after. But now I'll bolt everything up on the outside so we know that our carb is incorrectly. OK. 
And then these bolts are gonna go into the antibody mounts and we're pretty much done. So that, these are T20 torques. And then the rest are T27, 27 being the bigger, obviously. And uh, other than that, an eight millimeter is all you really need for for uh, sizes to know on these T27, T20, eight millimeter. That's about it, I think. Climbing class, this might be, so this, this raised part goes on the outside. It goes in like this. You can't, you don't want to put it in like this. So raised part on the outside, and it just goes on just like that. It kind of can be kind of a pain to put on, but usually if you can, right like that, it'll kind of snap in. And then when you put the bolt in, this was that one thicker bolt. The coarse thread, a little bit thicker than the rest. That is just for just kind of extra, extra, so you don't drop your saw. Now we can put our filter cover back on, or filter base. Make sure that boot is in there right. Some people run without this little spit back filter. Some people like it. I personally, I don't like to run them in there. Should we take it out? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, This I just leave it out. Okay. I'll send it with you if you want it or somebody tells you different that knows better. Just tell them that, I, blame it all on me. They always get so, lost anyway, so. Yeah, it's just, I just don't think it's necessary really. Basically the winter setting, summer setting. It's uh, I think the drop off, I'm not sure on this, I shouldn't say if I don't know, but I think it's like 40 degrees. It seems, yeah, to, okay. it seems pretty warm. Maybe it's- Yeah, it's pretty warm. That's about as, I, I always just leave it in summer mode. It really? It doesn't get that cold right. Yeah, on. right. Oh, that's summer mode right there. Yeah, it's the one you can see, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then uh, you, I cannot remember what you the- You flip it around, right? Yeah, you yeah. flip it around, but I can't remember the degrees. I should mm -hmm. know that, but usually I've, I've never seen one that it was flipped around. Yeah. I've seen every single one of them like this, and uh, I haven't heard of anybody having a problem and being like, oh, let me flip that around. Oh, there we go. Yeah. You know, now it runs great. Uh, but obviously the engineers are, are not dumb, so they're doing it for a reason. This little bearing here, I like to put a little bit of grease on it. We're about ready to put that giant panther bar on this thing and see what it looks like. Our friends in Oregon sent this. This came to John's house last night. Look at this. Huh? Lucky oh, yeah. You all know. You all know who sent this. This is the August Hunnicky's bar. Look at that. I'm gonna have to back up. That thing's huge. <laughs> you wow. Think, you think it'll pull it? We're gonna it's find out. I, I have not run ran one yet, but uh, thank God it's quarter inch pitch, Gene. It's uh, a long bar. It's a lot of bar, but it's quarter inch pitch, so it's yeah. really thin. So it's like a very narrow curve. So you should show them that. Cha yeah, you should show yeah. them that chain. So this chain I've never seen before. Yeah, you've seen a uh, quarter inch pitch on some, like if you get a pole saw or uh, that has a saw on a stick, or if you get those, like my electric Husky, I think has quarter inch pitch, but they've got those extra safety rakers. And the nice thing about this, hold on, I'm just trying to get this untangled. Yeah, I know, isn't that fun? Yeah. You can always get untangled by just finding pairs of loops. Grab it by the ears, that's yeah. something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you see, it's got no safety raker. It's just one single raker. And what? so it's really small, dainty chain, but it makes a very narrow curve. So the idea is the saw is utilizing less energy blasting through wood because it's a very narrow curve. It's a smaller, you're taking littler bites of wood. That is so cool. Yeah, the, yeah, all that the quarter inch pitch chain that I've used has those safety rakers on it. So I'm really curious to see how this works. Yeah, so this doesn't, I actually bought the Panther bar for my Husky. Not so much because of the bar, but because of the Panther chain, you know, getting rid of that safety right? raker makes it pull so much better. Ooh. So I've got, I've got a 14 inch on my Husky electric saw and I really like it. <laughs> this is, that's oh, a lot. That's ridiculous. That's a lot of wood. We're going to see. We're Dude, gonna yeah, see we got that log out there. I don't know how big that one is. That maple chunk it's is out probably there. Probably about the same. If it blasts through Probably that, I'll be pretty. Up. I'd be pretty happy. But we got to But we got to convert it to quarter inch pitch. So yep, we got to put this bad boy on it. So I think. And he sent it with the oiler gear too. Good yeah, man. Yeah, what a guy. Yeah, August is awesome. You're gonna see. Oh, he even sent it. What did he send it with a piston stop too? Oh, is that there? Crazy. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. That, yeah. Hey, that's awesome. We already got the right oiler oiler gear, so we can keep this. I mean, that's brand new too. So. 
keep that on there. But you do need for the three ace, and I did send the other one with you, I believe. You do yeah. need a different one. Otherwise, actually, I think this fits both, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, cool. So that's kind of nice. So, yeah, that goes on just like that. Ooh, nice yeah. new. Yeah, let's we'll see how this does. I, I'm probably going to go back to 14. Pretty, I'm probably going to go yeah, back to 14 it seems eventually. That for the right situation, but This though, is going to be fun, though. And that's all I do when I put it on it. Like I said, we won't, August is a man, and I won't even argue about the piston stop, but that's how I put them on. All right, step aside, John. All right, I get out of the way. Let's see how the pros do it. <laughs> Does it matter which way I hold it? Yeah, just keep it sideways. There we go. Yeah, you have to chain on backwards. Hey. See, I, I, think, I, I thought you were the pro. I knew I should have been running the phone. Yep. Yeah, I like this, actually. Yeah. What, running the phone? Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> you got the next saw. There's a test after it's putting together an entire See, saw. Yeah, well, we tore that. Yeah, a, literally a, tore that down to the bare. You could. You can't go any farther. No. There's nothing else you can take apart. <laughs> I got. A, I got a mess everywhere. You have to be like Gordy's shop is so pristine and clean. I mean, does he literally have like a maid running around there, like picking he's, stuff up? He's got to. He's got to. It's like I don't understand it. I never seen her, but he's got to. Where uh, you got the barn up for this thing? Yeah, it should be in that tray or somewhere. Look at that. Huh? Well, it's actually got like, uh, it's like oh, skeletonized yeah, totally. that bar a little bit. I guess so. That is weird. Oh, that's going to look even so good with that animals. orange guard on it. Yeah, even better. I'm going to have to do a photo shoot with this thing. Well, these are literally as simple as you just clip on the back. I'm amazed at how, oh, wait, the powder coating is nothing. probably, honestly, the powder coating is probably most of the weight. Yeah, it feels like nothing. So one thing about this, I'll tell you right off the bat that you might not want it. I think it's the reason that the last guy didn't want it. And I'll show you. It's because when you set it down, it tips over. So, uh, you know what I mean? Aluminum on it? Yeah, it, it, those bolt heads too. And it, it uh, doesn't matter. The ones they send you are the same. They're they're actually yeah. raised more. So, it, uh, it wants to tip forward like that. Whereas if you don't have that guard on there, yeah. it doesn't do it. Let's get it. Yeah, John's just putting a little Glue a little yeah, we're gonna too. so it doesn't tip so over. It, it, it drives tippy. drives everybody nuts that uses these tank guards. They are nice, but drove me nuts. I know that, and uh, we're gonna fix that. Otherwise, I don't know what else a guy would do. Already gluing stuff to the crazy nice saw. Uh... It looks cool though. Like it looks like it matches. Yeah, really. it's supposed to be there. I mean, come yeah. on. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Dries super fast too. It's the craziest saw I've ever seen. Yes! Look at that. Oh, that's nice. Yep. We drained all the fluids. Let's see what we're weighing in at. Nine pounds, 15 ounces. Yep. Nine pounds, 15 no ounces. No trickery. No editing. Both empty. Yeah, no, you're not going to really get to stay on there. Oh, no, no, huh? There you go. Huh? Hey, see, that's why you are in charge. Nine pounds, 15 ounces. Isn't that crazy? I don't understand it myself, but... It's the same weight. Scale don't lie. I mean, this one has... And that's a light bar. This has this little thing on yeah, it. Yeah, we have a tether. But this has the aluminum plate on it. And a little bit of sawdust, yep. That bar is so light. It's no, very that's light. A, that's a still light bar. Yep. And what, 14 inch? 14 inches. This is a 20 Jeez. inch panther bar. That's But crazy. it's quarter inch pitch, so it's thinner. It's thinner. a thinner metal. And it's got those, I don't know if that's just skeletonized or what the purpose of that is, I guess. Probably for weight, but dude, it's light. It's I was really like light. thinking this would be kind of a fun thing, but I, and um, sort of like a novelty, but I'm like holding it, and I'm like, I might just run it like this. This is dude, light. This when is I picked like it up, I was surprised. Thing. Like, I was really surprised. It's not really front-end heavy. The, the tank no. guard's making it nosedive. No, look at Look at that. I mean, it's totally it's totally balanced. God, that is so That's sweet. It's crazy, dude. This bar weighs nothing. All right, she's all done. Look at that beauty. There's even a little secret touch that John put on it. You want to hit the lights, John? Look at that. Haunted too. Really clever, John. <laughs> I mean, who's, who else makes a glow in the dark chainsaw? Definitely a first for me. <laughs>
right, we're gonna test this bad boy out. So I'm in Washington again. What ended up happening was when John put the saw together, he bought the crank seals from eBay and they were supposed to be new, but the guy sent him used uh, seals. So the saw was actually leaking air and I had to get on the road. So we actually, we put the saw together for the video, but I left and John actually had to tear the saw down again, replace those seals. And I couldn't be there to film it because I was, I was in Oregon at that time. But he sent, the, so he fixed it and he sent the saw to me. And now I'm at Gordy's house. Now I'm with my second favorite saw builder. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna run this thing and see how it runs. So let's, I, but before I do that, I just wanna say a huge thanks to John, you know, for doing all this for me. Not many guys would let you, not many builders would, you know, let a guy film their entire process step by step, explain it the whole way. So really patient. I was shocked of a huge new level of respect for builders, you know, even Gordy, like just seeing everything that they go through. It, it was so much more than I thought. Like I really thought it was gonna be like maybe, maybe two videos, we'd zip right through it. But every step of the way, him explaining meticulously, just all the little details. I have so much respect for these guys and what they do. So huge thank you to John. And yeah, let's see how, let's see how this thing cuts. <laughs> You want to give it a shot, Gordy? No. Try it out. That's too big a saw for me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try it? No, it's a good run saw though. It's only gonna get faster. You too. don't want to get on the camera. Shot. You don't want to be on the camera. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Can, can you can you grab that big one? Yeah. So I'm gonna cut it, but first I just wanna say thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you wanna support the show, you can do it at patreon.com slash treason. I've got merch now, guiltyofreason.com. You can, there's a form there to fill out if you wanna collaborate with me. So I'm gonna slice this log now. And once again, thanks for watching. I haven't ran one of these top handles forever. <laughs> Ripper. I like it. <laughs>